publisher of PhotoFocus, and I want to show you some of the new masking tools inside of Photoshop. They're really quite amazing. You'll also find them in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, and they're specifically for working with raw files. You'll see that there's many options. Let's start with a simple one here, like Select Sky. With a click, you see that it targets the sky nicely and makes a good selection, which is really cool. Now, if it's not perfect or it misses an area, for example, we have a little cloning down here that I previously did, and there's a few spots here, we can easily add to this. For example, let's add to it with the color range. Now, if I shift click, you see how simple it is to pick up some of that missing area and precisely define the sky, which is cool. If I want to subtract, I can also subtract using color range. And now holding down the Alt key, I can click on areas that I want to subtract or shift click. And you see it continues to be a subtraction mask, which is really quite cool. That just lets you dial this in for super precise control. Now let's rename this and call it Sky. This is a nice global adjustment, and I'm going to uncheck Show Overlay here. Now, what I want to do is refine the sky a little bit. For example, opening up the brightness, increasing the contrast, and really playing with the white point versus the highlights and black point. And that's quite nice there to really define that. Now, what we can do is duplicate this mask and simply start to reverse it. So within this here, we can now invert each of these masks inside. If I click on the mask and press X, you'll see it starts to flip. And now, instead of the sky being selected, we've got a pretty good selection of our cornstalk. Using this here, I'm just going to choose to add here and do a little bit of color range and just shift click to select some more. If I turn on Show Overlay, this makes it super precise and very easy to see what's happening. If you get areas you don't want, just select the Subtract Mask and you can start to click to define areas that you want to subtract. Now, in this case, it's a little bit interesting. Since we inverted those masks, I actually have to toggle between some of these. And it gets interesting there. That's not bad. Let's go ahead with this Selected and I'll choose Subtract. And this time I'll choose a luminance mask and just click on the clouds themselves. And you see how that starts to target it. With the luminance range selected, we can even define where that's going to go and really dial that in there to say what's selected and what is ignored. And you see that that just quickly gives us a better selection, allowing for more targeting, which is really kind of cool. I like how this makes it super precise as we're targeting the different areas. Now, with that selection, I'm going to refine things a bit. But before I do, let's rename this corn. Now, I see a little bit of the clouds are selected, but in this particular case, that's not going to be a big deal. We'll hide the overlay. And I just want to lift that a little bit more to really bring it out. That looks great. And by playing with the highlights here, we can recover. And if we come on down to the details and effects section here, it's going to be super simple to bring out that texture quite nicely. That looks great. I'm going to hold down the option of the Alt key as I drag some of these sliders here. And you'll see that it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. For example, if we're working here in details, and I really want to work with this, this will just make it a little bit simpler to dial that in. And I'm going to go ahead and use sharpness here to really dial in the details in the corn. Well, that looks great. So far, we've done a nice job of selecting the sky versus the corn. But I want to make one more mask here. So I'll create a new mask, and this time just select the luminance range. And we'll click on the clouds themselves to target them. That worked quite nicely. Now, using the sliders here, you'll notice that I can tolerate a broader area with a nice, gentle transition. By spreading this out, it creates feathering in the clouds themselves. And if I get that just right, I could really dial that in so it ignores most of the corn, but gives a great job. I like that. Now, within this here, I see the luminance range itself. 
And that works really nicely, but let's rename this and call it clouds. Now we've got sky and clouds, just the corn and just the clouds themselves. Notice here you can rename the individual components or the parent mask that it builds up to. That's cool. I'm going to hide the overlay now and just use this to refine things with the clouds. By pulling down the saturation, we can lose some of the color spill in the clouds and play with the balance here. I'll typically pull highlights down and whites up. If we turn on the clipping indicators, this helps us see if we're overexposing any areas so we can avoid crushing things. That works really nicely there. I'll just back that off ever so slightly. There we go. And that gave us the ultimate in dynamic range. Now, if you want, you can toggle the visibility on a mask, and that just makes it easy to see the change. And with that change, that really did a nice job on the clouds themselves. I'll soften those clouds with some negative clarity and negative texture as well, and just find the right balance there to bring that out. Dehaze will be interesting on clouds as well, and I'll actually put a little more in, and you notice how it gives some shape or definition. By using these targeted masks, it's really easy to refine things. All right, three masks there did the trick. Let's move on and explore some other techniques with a different image.